South Africa, we have a constitution that guarantees a right to an environment that is not harmful. We know that the constitution is the highest law in the land, but how do we use it to protect ourselves? When the Green Connection visited communities along the coast, people were saying that they knew nothing about an EIA. So what is an EIA and how does it link to our constitutional right to an environment that is not harmful? The Green Connection spoke to Professor Merle Solman, renowned expert on environmental management tools and how to ensure that people's rights are protected. Okay, so when it comes to the issue of EIAs as an academic, you would know the framework, how it works. Why do you think EIAs are so important? I ask this because if there weren't any, or this process of an EIA wasn't present, what other potential risks would there be to communities? Well, I think what the Environmental Impact Assessment does is it provides these opportunities for the voice of communities, the concerns of communities to be heard. And if you're dealing with consultants who are operating independently and who are recognizing the value of getting that local input, then those voices help shape that final product. And so I believe that if an EIA is done correctly, and comprehensively, and if there's proper and adequate and meaningful consultation, mm -hmm. that in fact we can end up with sustainable developments, projects that are going to serve and, and improve human well-being and ensure that we don't damage the environment. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Professor, please could you explain how environmental management is legally supposed to happen in South Africa? The EIA process starts with what's known as a screening process. And basically, the Environmental Impact Assessment Regulations has put out some lists which tells us what projects need to be subjected to either a basic assessment or a full assessment. And then the consultants who's driving this process has to then embark on scoping. So the scoping process is, is the opportunity where the public can be involved. And this is a critical opportunity and moment in the EIA process because local communities interested in affected parties can share their views about the project. So once we know what issues need to be addressed, then our specialists who get appointed by the consultant go away and do their work. That's the assessment part of it. So they go away, they do their studies, they go on site, they might conduct surveys or whatever scientific work needs to be done. What's important then is that the project um, and all the environmental impact assessment information gets documented in a draft EIA report and that is then available for public comment. And this needs to be uh, placed in, in public libraries or in places where people can gain access to it. Mostly it's put on the consultant's website, uh, but of course in the case of local communities, they need to get hard copies. And because these are often very technical and large documents, yes. communities might need to request a summary um, in their own language of the salient and the important points. Yes. Once the, the public and communities have commented on that draft report, the consultants are required to take that into account and prepare a final report. That final EIA report then gets submitted to the decision maker. And the decision makers then make a decision either to approve the project, approve it with conditions, or to reject it. So in the case of a positive decision, yes, you can go ahead with the project, communities or any public person might be aggrieved by that decision and yes. say, no, you have not taken into account key issues of concern. So they have an opportunity to appeal that decision and they have 60 days within which to appeal it. Okay. And then the decision maker makes a decision as to whether to uphold the appeal or to basically say, no, I'm sticking with my original decision. If the decision maker does not uphold the appeal, there is still an opportunity for communities and uh, the general public to um, challenge that decision okay. but this is through the legal process of course this involves lawyers advocates it's expensive 
And many, you know, many people will not go that route. So yes. very few cases actually end up in court. Yeah, so assuming that we have reached a decision that people are broadly supportive of, the final stage is now you implement the decision. And, and very often there's an environmental management plan that gets drawn up to guide the, 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 the people on site yes. to ensure that, those, that there's no environmental and social harm or environmental risks during that construction phase and then the operation phase of the project. Yes. What is your advice to communities who find out about an EIA for a project in the area? Well, I think it would be helpful for them to know when they should voice their concerns and, you know, their rights. Yes. If communities more, were more aware of their, their rights, yes. enshrined in the Constitution, enshrined in the NEMA, and in the Environmental Impact Assessment regulations, um, I think that would be very important. Um, and then, of course, being uh, clearer about at what stages of the process they should be consulted. Yes. So I think greater awareness is really important. And then, as I've said before, I think being organised yes. um, is obviously one way of ensuring you know that you can, well, that you're better networked yes. and and can get uh, perhaps more resources and more support uh, to brought to bear to that particular concern. We have learned that an EIA is a process which facilitates stakeholder participation to ensure that all issues pertaining to a project can be addressed and that an informed decision is taken about whether a project can take place or not. Communities need to be aware of their rights to fair participation. Express and affirm your rights to communicate in any one of the South African languages. You have the right to be given all the information you need to make an informed decision by the consultants conducting the EIA. For more information about the Who Stole Our Oceans campaign, visit our website on www.thegreenconnection.org.za.